everybody. And in this video, I will be showing you how to defeat anything in Lies of P, regardless of your skill level, experience with souls, or your build. Whether you're stuck on a boss, a mini boss, or just a tough enemy, this strategy works for everything. <laughs> this game is so incredible that I want as many people as possible to be able to experience it. And when anyone has told me that, hey, I'm stuck on this boss, I'm getting really frustrated, I think I'm gonna put the game down, I don't know if I can do it, this is the advice that I give them. And I kid you not, the next day they come back and they're like, hey, that worked. I killed the boss. I also killed this other boss. And now I'm having a lot of fun and I feel like the game is beatable for me. So let's get into the first thing. And the first thing is throwables. Oh my lord. The throwables in this game are absolutely busted. We're talking the electric, thermite, acid, shot put. All of them are so good, but especially the electric blitz canisters. Puppets are particularly susceptible to electric damage, which is mostly what you will be fighting early on. But also the electric shock status effect just makes you do more damage, period, against any enemy. So this is always going to be a value throwable for you to have on you, regardless of how weak the enemy is to it. If you want to stick to throwing whatever the enemy is weak to, you can generally think of it as electric versus puppets, fire versus things that are squishy and furry. <laughs> that should get you through the vast majority of the game as you're learning yourself what things are weak to. But that's just like a general rule that you can follow. Now, if you are on a really tough enemy and you really do not want to get close to that enemy, you want to be as far away for as long as possible. What you can do is every single enemy in most games, but in Lies of P as well, they have a zone that they aggro in. So it's like the area that they patrol. And then there's like a little bit further out of that patrol area that they will chase you. And then they're like, ah, this is outside of my zone. I'm leaving. <laughs> when they do that, if you can get an enemy to that space where they're aggroed on you, but they go, nah, I'm good and start walking away, you can just constantly go between that area and throw your throwables at them until they're dead. You can just, that's a thing that you can just do. Now you do have a limited amount of throwables that you can hold on you. So you might actually have to hit a monster at some point, but with so many throwables available to you, you've got all of the canisters for the status effects. You've got the shot put, you've got a sharp pipe. You've got the freaking wheel saw thing. That thing's nuts. All of them are nuts to be honest, but you can just have all of your throwables equipped on you and just keep aggroing between those zones of where they, they're coming after you and they decide to leave and just throw your throwables. And then when you feel comfortable, you can go in there and get a few hits in and boom, easy peasy. So if there's ever a super tough enemy, obviously this does not work on bosses because you can't leave their area. They have their own arena. But if there's ever a tough enemy that you encounter in the field, you can totally just kill every single one of them like this. If it's something that you are not confident in fighting, you don't feel like you can parry or dodge it, you can just keep aggroing them inside and outside of their little zone and throwing stuff at them. Now we have to discuss the shot put specifically. This item, I didn't use it my entire first playthrough like an idiot. This item is a game changer. Have you ever gotten an enemy groggy with the little white outline and not been able to get off your heavy attack to get the big hit in and you're getting so pissed off because you're like, oh my God, I have this really short window to hit this enemy with a heavy attack so I can do the visceral attack. I'm gonna lose my window. Well, guess what? You can just throw a shot put at them. Yeah, you can just throw a shot put at them. As soon as their health bar goes white, get the fudge out of there, run away, throw your shot put at them, and boom, they topple over ready for you to do a big hit. I didn't even know it did this. But not only can you trigger the down state from them being groggy, you can also make the enemy groggy with the shot put. I had a moment where I was just throwing electric blitz canisters. I was like, let's see if this works. I threw my canisters, I threw two shot puts, and the enemy was in a down state, ready for a visceral attack. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. <laughs> Now, this is super helpful if you're someone who loves the slower weapons. This is legit going to change your entire life. <laughs> 
Heavy attacks are very slow on a lot of weapons in general, like that's why they're heavy attacks. But on the very, very large slow weapons, they are extra super slow. So on those weapons, keeping some shot puts in your pocket is just gonna make your experience so much less frustrating because as soon as you see that white outline around the health bar, you can back up and throw a shot put at them and boom, there you go. You don't have to put yourself in harm's way trying to do a heavy attack. You will never miss a groggy window ever again. <laughs> you don't even need the upgrades from the P organ that make the groggy window larger because you can just throw a shot put at them. Now, if you want to get any more of these throwables, you can, of course, farm them. If you're early game and you want to farm the electric blitz canisters, you can farm them in Elysian Boulevard, and you can purchase a limited amount from the vendor by the elevator there. However, when you do reach the Malam district, you can purchase all of these throwables completely unlimited by the vendor inside of the Red Lobster up the ladders. Seriously, use throwables if you are struggling in this game if you're frustrated if a boss is kicking your ass use throwables they are so good now let's talk about scaling really quick because all of the items in lies of peace scale with a different attribute point anything related to statuses is going to scale with the advanced stat which you totally do not have to level at all because all of the throwables are going to do good for you with minimal advanced stats, you don't really need to worry about it. However, if you really are going all in on this playstyle of using throwables, and that is something that you are finding is important for you to use, for you to get through the game and have a smooth experience and not be frustrated, you might as well put some points into advance. I personally, the build that I put together had a mixture of technique and advance. You can go motivity and advance, whichever you prefer. And the reason that I say that you want to go technique or motivity with advance is because a lot of the weapons don't just scale with advance. They also scale with something else. So the weapon that I'm using right now has a B in advanced scaling, and then I used a handle to make it a B in technique scaling. So I'm getting my worth from both of those stats. So yeah, I would highly recommend that if you are going all in on the throwable throwing things, <laughs> that you go technique and advance or motivity and advance depending on your playstyle, because the weapons that you find are gonna have scaling for all of those things. It's not just gonna be an advanced scaling weapon. This will also help you with your Legion Arm status damage, which is what I highly recommend using if you are struggling. I would definitely recommend that you use the Electric Arm, the Fire Arm, the Acid Arm, any of those arms compared to the others, especially if you're leveling Advance. Leveling Advance will enable you to use your Legion Arm more. It will also help the Electric, Acid, and Thermite Legion Arms do more damage or stack the status effects faster. So I'm currently using a weapon that has innate fire damage, so I'm running with the electric legion arm and man against puppets you can basically perma stun them even the larger enemies such as this annoying cop puppet or the big annoying shield puppet you can just stun them you can get them in a perma lock stun by just charging your legion arm the electric legion arm specifically and they just get completely stuck when i tell you that i was amazed at how easy it was to deal with these enemies compared to my run my first run through the game i was a little mad not really but i was like jesus man <laughs> it's so easy to deal with these enemies when you're just charging electric at them it's amazing and then like i said squishy enemies get set on fire right away I'm currently all in on advance and technique. My weapon has an eight fire. The little squishy boys, I set them on fire in like one swing. It's insanity. Now let's talk about P organ upgrades that are gonna be helpful for you. So the first thing is I recommend getting Link Dodge right away. The reason I don't have it, even though I'm saying this, is because I'm a big parry fiend. I fiend for the parry. I don't really dodge that much. I'm dodging a bit more in the footage just because I wanted to show you guys what it's like to be a dodger and throw throwables. But I highly, highly recommend that you pick up Link Dodge. It's gonna make your dodge just feel a lot smoother. The other one that I highly recommend that you get right away is Rising Dodge. Both of these, the Rising Dodge and the Link Dodge are gonna be super helpful 
when it comes to the game just feeling smoother, combat feeling smoother, and you being able to get off the damn ground when an enemy hits you, which is very important against some enemies. Besides that, another super easy recommend is anything that gives you an increase in pulse cells. The more healing that you have, the more mistakes that you can make. If you end up getting hit, you get into a sticky situation, you don't really have to worry about it because you have plenty of pulse cells. So anytime you see increased pulse cells, you go ahead and grab that. The same thing goes with enhanced pulse cell recovery. This is gonna make you recover more health with each pulse cell use. This way, if you're running with all of the increased pulse cells and increased recovery, you're gonna have more of them and they're gonna heal you for a lot more. So the pulse cells that you do have can go further in helping you through each encounter. Now, if you are someone who wants to use specters in this game, you might want to look into increasing your cube uses and things that make your cube go faster. So if we go into here, we can look for the increased wish stone fast use thing, wherever that is. Here it is. Quick wish stone use. Uses wish stones quickly because you can get wish stones, which I will show you in a moment, that buff your specter. So in boss fights, all you're going to have to really do is you summon your specter, you use a cube to buff your specter up, you're going to have more cube uses, you're going to be able to use them quickly, and your summon is going to be able to do more damage, they're going to be able to tank more damage, and you can stand there throwing throwables at them. That's going to help you get such a good head start against any boss that it's going to make things feel a lot more manageable. And then you're going to have a ton of pulse cells. They're going to be healing you more because you've upgraded all of that stuff. You're going to be super fast with your dodges, and it's just going to make it a lot less frustrating of an experience for you if you ever find yourself struggling in this game. Now, taking a quick look at the wish stone items, anything that's gonna buff your specter. So you can get temporarily restore specter HP. You can get explodes when specter is hit, reduces specters received damage for a set period of time and increases resistance to all status ailments, increases specters destructive power, generates specters electric blitz attack for a set period of time and reduces damage received, generates specters fire attack, for a set period of time, Spectre avoids death. <laughs> like, these are crazy. The amount of things that you could use to buff your Spectre, take advantage of it. Seriously, this game gives you a lot of things that you can use to really tip things in your favor. So the ideal situation, if you are finding yourself struggling in anything, is that you're gonna summon your Spectre, you're gonna use any of these to buff your Spectre, you're gonna have two of these. You're gonna use these really fast. And then while your specter is popping off, you're gonna stand there throwing throwables at them. And I promise you, no matter how bad you think you are at Souls games, no matter how difficult you think Lies of P is, you are gonna be able to get it done. Trust me, seriously. I've I, Through doing research for this video, running through New Game Plus, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> this is so much easier than my parrying ass. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you have picked up any tips along the way to make the game easier for yourself, please do share them in the comment section because I want everyone to experience this game. It's so good. And some people are put off by how difficult they're seeing Lies of P is, but it's really not that bad when you use all of the things that the game gives you to make the game easier for yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please stop by the Twitch stream if you wanna see me doing any stuff live. We're gonna be jumping into Lords of the Fallen next week. That's our next big game that we're gonna be covering on YouTube and Twitch. And thank you so much. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave your suggestions in the comment section. Bye.